Hello, everyone. This is Whitney Will from Star Hearth Astrology, and I'm here today to talk to you about Aquarius season 2022. So that will be the month that the sun is in the sign of Aquarius, known as Aquarius season. In this video, I'm going to be going over the larger themes of where, of how Aquarius season kind of fits into the year as a whole, as well as breaking down all of the individual transits that we're going to see. So I'll start with just kind of the overview. What we have most significantly is the end of Venus retrograde and Mercury retrograde. So both of those planets will station direct during Aquarius season. But just as importantly, neither of those planets will leave the post shadow of their retrograde during Aquarius season. So we are still going to be dealing with all of those themes because they are still moving within the band of degrees that they retrograded over. We are going to get a Mars-Venus conjunction. Um, Mars and Venus are doing this funky thing where they normally, a conjunction with them is going to last about three days, but because of Venus's retrograde and how it falls and where Mars is, they are going to be within a degree of each other for about a month. And so that's not going to finish an Aquarius season, but it is going to begin an Aquarius season. So we've got a lot of Capricorn action from the personal planets, Venus, Mars, and Mercury. And, um, and we'll have the sun kind of developing the Aquarian story, um, which culminates with a Leo full moon right before we head into Pisces season. So I am going to pull up the chart and we are actually going to walk through day by day Aquarius season. So here's where we begin. The sun has just entered the sign of Aquarius. We can see that Mercury is retrograde and so is Venus. Um, and that's how we begin the month. We're just a few days after the full moon in Cancer. So you can see this big fat moon um, just past its opposition with the sun. So we're kind of busy as we enter into Aquarius season. So the sun enters and it's going to be Sunday that we get the midpoint of Mercury's retrograde, which feels really fast, huh? Um, let's see if I can wind it back a few hours so we can see that Kazemi. Um, so that is where the sun conjoins Mercury. The sun conjoins Mercury at two different points in Mercury's cycle. One is when Mercury is moving direct. And so from our perspective, Mercury is moving behind the sun. And the other one is during the retrograde when Mercury is passing in between the earth and the sun. And so the Kazemi is the midpoint of that retrograde and signals yeah, oh, it's really early. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so you can see they're pretty close. Um, it signals the, the kind of, we have gotten lost in the woods and Mercury retrograde. Things aren't moving forward. We're not really sure what to do about them. And at the Kazemi, we kind of understand what went wrong right? Um, it's the opportunity for Mercury to be purified in the solar principle, which is about kind of our, our more conscious nature, what we're trying to do in the world. What I kind of think of the sun as just like, the sun is what the project is. Um, and obviously everyone is going to contribute to that. Um, but the sun is going to hold that vision most steadfastly. And so when Mercury gets purified in the heart of the sun, it kind of um, comes back into the fold. Now we still have, you know, over another week of retrograde. So we're still gonna figure out exactly what that's gonna look like, but this Kazemi point is, it's almost like it's the still point in the middle. So that one happens on Sunday the 23rd, um, but very, very early in the morning. Um, 
Yeah, it seems really fast to me, um, this Mercury retrograde. So I actually counted, and this one is the fastest Mercury retrograde that we get all year. It is just under three weeks, whereas the other ones will be over three weeks. Um, so they vary a little bit, and this is the midpoint. Um, then the very next day, and this first, I mean, after the first few days, this next week is pretty busy. We get, um, we get Mars moving into Capricorn. It's actually going to happen on the 24th. Um, Mars moves into Capricorn and so joins the party with Venus, right? Is Mars in Capricorn is... Um, is the warrior's stamina connected to the big dreams of Capricorn. It is the hardest working Mars that we can find in the Zodiac, almost too hard working. So right with Mars and Capricorn, we run into issues with, um, um, with compulsive work. So workaholic, workaholism. Um, Capricorn is also the most libidinous sign in the zodiac. Um, I won't say the most sexual because I don't think that it's necessarily the most sensual or the most sexual, but the libido of Capricorn um, is, it's almost compulsive and Mars brings that out. So there can be a kind of sexual addiction that we also see with Mars in Capricorn at times. Um, and Mars is now in the same sign as Venus, and they will be together for a while, but they begin their co-presence when Mars enters the signs. And I really think that this is a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, I think that when we have a Venus retrograde and we've kind of gone over and kind of reassessed our values, what we care about, who we care about, Mars coming into the sign can bring a lot of energy to allow us to make those changes that reflect our kind of change of heart. But on the other hand, we've had Venus not quite um, acting as the social glue that she normally does to hold things together. And when we have Mars come in, Mars is going to exacerbate that problem. So even when Venus stations direct, as we'll see, having Mars there means, you know, she's not back to like social niceties. Venus, she can't quite smooth things over. She can't quite mend fences when you have Mars there. So... I think there's a lot of energy for setting boundaries and for constructing new things, not so much energy for reconciliation. Okay, so Mars goes into Capricorn the very next day. I'm gonna press my mic. Um, yeah, so on the 25th, we will have Mercury retrograde back in to Capricorn. So going from Aquarius into Capricorn um, as part of its retrograde cycle. And so at that point, we had Mars just enter from the beginning of Capricorn. We have Mercury retrograding back in from the end of Capricorn, we thought, right, the sun left Capricorn and it was like, oh, we're on to new territory. No, we are not. We are in the land of Capricorn. Capricorn season this year, I really feel like lasts about three months. There was so much Capricorn in December and then the heart of Capricorn season in January. We're still in January, obviously, but um, with all the personal planets in Capricorn, it's really like we get a three month Capricorn season. Um, we get to do a lot of hard work here. And I think that's really the offering in this space because Capricorn promises the reward and dedication to hard work. So all of the things that we are really pushing ourselves on, that we are really dedicating the strength of our will and our dedication, dedicating our dedication, nice. Um, we will see progress. Now it'll be Capricornian progress, which is of the nature of Saturn. So it's slow, but it builds on itself. Um, and really it's stable. It's not kind of building fantasies in the sky. 
um, it's really the kind of one step at a time, the journey of a thousand miles. Um, and so we're kind of stuck in that. And I think it can be frustrating to feel like we're not making progress. Um, and I think that really destabilizes us when we also have the uncertainty of the pandemic and things are opening up and not and these surges. And I think we're kind of fatigued. And so I think there's a fatigue in this season um, that it's almost like, okay, let's just be present focused. Let's just be where we are and let's just do the things that we need to do because it will change eventually, but our effort in this area is not going to make it change faster. That's the nature of Capricorn. On the 28th, we have Mercury's conjunction with Pluto. We will complete on the 28th. And that is the second of three conjunctions. So really potent Plutonian work. So conversations that transform the nature of things, the revelation of secrets, whether you are the one revealing or you are the one being revealed to. That's some of the things. Our words are very, very potent here with a Mercury-Pluto conjunction. We're also saying things that are making people uncomfortable. So you can kind of watch the mean sphere for like things being a little bit less PC. There's a little bit of a shock factor, a little bit of naming the shadows, maybe um, overshooting vulnerability a little bit. Um, so if you kind of, and you know, show up in a really honest way, you might have a vulnerability hangover in the morning. The very next day, Venus stations direct. So you see that little black S means she's stationing direct. She stations direct at 11 degrees and five arc minutes of Capricorn or four arc minutes of Capricorn. Um, and so she's going to hang out there for a little bit because right in the station degree, it's not just like, Ook! and then she moves forward again, right? It's a slow coming into a pause and then moving forward again. So we kind of have this place of just Venus taking a breath at 11 degrees of Capricorn. You can notice where that falls in the chart. Um, and she's kind of, she's done with her review. She's the morning star. If you go outside, even now when I'm recording this, um, the 18th of January, you can see her at sunrise. She's been reborn as the morning star. And morning star Venus is different because she knows what she wants. And so she's much more passionate in the pursuit of that. Whereas at the beginning of a retrograde, we're dealing with crone Venus and she is wise and she's letting go of the world. And she is a little bit more in the space of forgiveness and gratitude and not, not holding on to things. Morning star Venus is delighted by the world. It's not a moral judgment. I have a morning star Venus. Um, you know, she wants things. And so she also has the energy to pursue them more. And with Mars in the picture, that is emphasized as well. We'll also feel that very personal hit of her because the moon will conjoin Venus shortly after her direct station. Then the next day, told you this was a busy week, we have the sun in a square to Uranus. So the sun squares Uranus, which can kind of, it, it's almost like this scene change and it kind of pulls us out of Capricorn land for a minute. And we kind of, you know, this, um, this square takes place at the degree that Mercury station retrograde at. Um, and so I think this square between the sun and Uranus is really this moment of insight where we understand how the plans need to change and we understand why. But in Aquarius, we're okay with that. It's like, oh, okay, we're, 
who need to do something differently because that's how the world is going to be, okay, we're going to be able to do that. And so it's this kind of reset button. It may make us a little bit restless. We may be wanting to cut ties with some kind of obligation possibly. Um, and we need to be a little bit careful because Uranus will make that very easy. And then we might have to walk it back. So there's a little bit of a tripwire. Now, the, the other thing about this is that we are in the darkest phase of the moon when it happens. And often when we see aspects that happen in the dark phase of the moon, it's going to be more internal and less dramatic because the moon isn't um, kind of bringing things into being in the same way, isn't quite holding space for that. We've got a moon that you couldn't even see in the sky. She's a dark moon at this point. And so we are internal wrapping things up and right there may be ah here's my insight but now I'm going to go into the solitude and the um the union with the unconscious that we do during new moons and um and stew in it a little bit before something happens so let's see um, put it forward we have a um, Aquarius new moon that happens at, at 12 degrees and 20 arc minutes. So again, that's very close to the degree of the Saturn Uranus square of Mercury's retrograde station. So we have again, this kind of the threshold between the first and the second decan of Aquarius being emphasized. We have a new beginning right in that space, a stepping into something new can check out where Aquarius falls in your chart. And this will be your yearly Aquarius new moon, your yearly kind of reset button for that space. Now, what I always tell people about new moons is that it's not about your conscious mind deciding what you want and then making like a manifestation list. The dark of the lunar cycle is about going into a, um, a solitudinous, solitudinous internal space and really listening, listening to your own emptiness. Um, because that emptiness is filled with fertility of things that want to come into being. And when we kind of put down our expectations, when we kind of shed our expectations, we can witness what is there. So one of my favorite ways to do this is to take a bath in the dark. Um, and something about the water and the darkness, right, helps you think differently. Um, go on a walk alone to a place you've never been. Um, pay special attention to your dreams is also a good way. Anyway, I think this is a pretty lovely new moon. It is in a square to Uranus. So I think it can have some kind of game changing qualities. We don't always see that in the moment of the new moon, but we might see it over the next two weeks as the moon grows into fullness. So then we have the next big thing happens, hey, February. Um, is Mercury stations direct. So Mercury is gonna station direct on February 3rd. So now we have the messenger moving direct. Communication can be a little bit easier. We're not misscheduling everything. We're not having kind of our wires crossed. Things are a little bit straightforward. Now it's pausing, you know, right on the degree that Venus stationed retrograde at, very close to Pluto. So we're still kind of, um, communication still has this potency and with Mercury stopped and parked right there, you can see a deepening of that. Then the next day we have the sun can join Saturn. So this isn't, um, it's not super rare. It happens once a year that the sun can join Saturn. And so that is similar to a Saturn station in the sense that we can get more overt Saturnian vibes going on. Um, and so that means like 
needing to take the mature approach to something, recognizing our own limitations. It can be a sobering and a sombering um, moment, but very clarifying and I think can really help us prioritize in the same way that when we have limitations on our finances or our time, that that forces us to prioritize what it is that we really care about and what can just fall away. So that can be a nice kind of aspect for like culling the herd. It's going to be um, relevant to whichever house you have Aquarius in, in a whole sign sense. Following that, we have a pretty quiet week and there's not another aspect that I think is too significant until we get to February 11. And what we get is the third and final exact conjunction of Mercury and Pluto. So they will conjoin for a third time. Again, right? this is just, the Mercury retrogrades being tied into to Pluto is the storyline that started in 2021 and will extend all the way through 2022. Um, and we had it with the Mercury retrograde in Libra in October. And then we've got these three conjunctions um, here in part of our current Mercury retrograde cycle. And then the other two will happen in Earth signs as well. And they will form trines. If you're interested, in looking into the Mercury retrogrades this year thematically as a whole. I have another YouTube video where I talk about all of them. But so, right, we're changing the way that we communicate. We might learn really intense things. Um, we're seeing the shadows of how we communicate. And right, when we communicate in these really potent ways, they do change us. And so that I think is what the story of Mercury's triple conjunctions with Pluto is about. And I think it's also about learning the lessons of the Venus retrograde in a mercurial cerebral way. So not only are we feeling those, those lessons and what's changing in our emotional life, in our hearts, in our connections, but we are also integrating them in our language and in our thoughts are much more mercurial. Um, so that happens on the 11th. Then on Valentine's Day, we get, well, actually, okay, I'm going to go back. Because on the 12th, we get Mars coming into within a degree of Venus. And as I click through the chart, for the rest of this time, they are going to stay very close. And in fact, they will stay very close through the first third of March within a degree of a conjunction. So here is where we really have the combined significations of Mars and Venus, of desire and the effort to go out and get it, right? We kind of have this supercharged um, quality of like, that's what I want. I am going so hard at it, right? which on the one hand, what's going to be left, we don't want to steamroll, but we might not be able to stop it at this point. And so that aspect comes to within a degree where it's very potent on February 11th. Then on the 14th, we have Mercury ingressing back into Aquarius. So it's still in the shadow of its retrograde. It's gonna be in the shadow of its retrograde until February 23rd. So we're still processing all of that stuff, but now we've got Mercury back into Aquarius thinking in the bigger picture, um, thinking about the future, trying to think really big thoughts um, about, all of that, trying to contain the whole, trying to understand all sides of things. Um, and then we build up to a Leo full moon. Walk it back. See that full moon in Leo? Um, it happens at 28 degrees. Leo. Yeah, right in there. Um, yeah, 
the moon is in the sun sign. The sun is in the sign of its exile. We've got a full moon. I think this full moon asks you to remember joy, to um, remember that even though the sun is in its quest for the greater good, the moon is reminding us how, how we are the hero of our own stories. And we are the hero of, yeah, we have to fully embrace our role in order to be effective. And I really think that, that would, that's what this full moon is about. And if you look over here at the same time as the full moon, so not in, a, in aspect to the full moon, but kind of co-occurring, we get the first exact conjunction of Mars and Venus. I think we're going to be feeling it, obviously, from a few days prior when they come into very close contact, but this is the exact conjunction. And I think, right, when we have a moon saying, but what about me? What about what I want? What about what I care about? And then we've got Venus and Mars conjoining each other in Capricorn, in the let's make it happen, no matter how hard it is place. Um, we have a lot of energy to kind of push goals forward in almost a fearsome way. Um, so that's what we have. And then we have the sun go into Pisces. Ooh, I'm still um, the sun goes into Pisces on the 18th and we are on to the new stories and into the sun being in Jupiter sign for the first time in two months. And Jupiter is in Pisces now. So there is some saturated goodness in Pisces season that is going to become even more lovely in, in Aries season. Um, but we still got to get all of our personal planets through Aquarius. Um, so that's what we have to look forward to. Thanks for watching my Aquarius season forecast. Please like and subscribe um, and leave me any questions. Um, any reflections on your transits in, um, in the comments below. I will release more videos for the two, for the new moon and the full moon. And, um, and I also do weekly check-ins where I go over and break down just the week's astrology um, into more bite-sized digestible pieces. Hope you all have a lovely Aquarius season. And I will catch you later.